Good morning. Welcome to our worship on today, October the 4th, which is, of course, the feast day of St Francis of Assisi. And being the feast day of St Francis of Assisi, there re really is only one hymn with which we can start. <laughs> of our God and King, lift up your voice and with the sea, oh praise Him, Alleluia, thou burning sun. St Francis, of course, spoke about our relationship with all of creation. But just to put that into context, 
Let us first of all see what Jesus said about our relationship with one particular part of creation. Hi, I am Emily and I'm going to read Mark 12, 28 to 34, the greatest commandment. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus has given them a good answer. He asked him, all of the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second one is, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well, said teacher, reply, the man replied, you are right in saying that. God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength. And to love your neighbour as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from, and fr and from then on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Note exactly what Jesus said. Love your neighbour as yourself. Not love your neighbour as much as you love yourself. And that's very wise because, of course, an awful lot of people don't really love themselves very much. Do you love being exactly who you are? We'll come back to that later. But that's why Jesus said, love your neighbour as yourself, as part of yourself, just as much as you regard your hands, your feet, your eyes, your mouth as part of yourself. That is how we are to regard our neighbour. And when we say love our neighbour, we don't just mean love the people whom we happen to love, nor love the people we happen to like. It means we love everyone. We love the asylum seeker. We love the refugee. We love those people whom we find difficult. We love those people who we don't get on with very much. We love those people who don't actually like us very much. What Jesus is saying to us is, everybody is our neighbour, bound together in a wonderful network of love. We need our neighbours. <laughs> our neighbours need us.
So having heard what Jesus said is about one part of God's creation, let's now hear what St Francis says about all of God's creation. The Canticle of the Sun by St Francis of Assisi. Most high, all powerful, all good Lord, all praise is yours, all glory, honour and blessings. To you alone, most high, do they belong. No mortal lips are worthy to pronounce your name. We praise you, Lord, for all your creatures, especially for Brother Son, who is the day through whom you give us light, and he is beautiful and radiant with great splendor. Of you, most high, he bears your likeness. We praise you, Lord, for Sister Moon, and the stars. In the heavens you have made them bright, precious and fair. We praise you, Lord, for brothers' wind and air, fair and stormy all weather's moods, by which you cherish all that you have made. We praise you, Lord, for sister water, so useful, humble, precious and pure. We praise you, Lord, for brother Friar, through whom you light the night. He is beautiful, playful, robust and strong. We praise you, Lord, for Sister Earth, who sustains us with her fruits, coloured flowers and herbs. We praise you and bless you, Lord, and give you thanks and serve you in all humility. Again, note now what St Francis says. He talks about Brother Sun, Sister Moon, in exactly the same way as we talk about our human brothers and sisters. I think what we get from St Francis is the great insight that we develop what Jesus says about the way you regard our fellow human beings. to the way we regard the whole of God's creation. We must regard God's creation as part of ourselves, just as we regard our fellow human beings as part of ourselves. And if we could do that, if we can do that, that will really give us such an obvious and deep understanding of the way in which we should treat God's creation. If we regard the creation as part of ourselves, then we don't exploit it. We don't abuse it. We don't take it for granted. Instead, we care for it and we nurture it in just the same way as God's creation nurtures us. We're, we're, we're very lucky living in a beautiful part of the world and, and during the lockdown being able, being able just to go out for a walk in this gorgeous, beautiful, ever-changing countryside, I have found, and I know many other people have found, deeply nourishing. In exactly the same way as creation nourishes and cares for us we should care for it. There, of course, is a great movement at the moment that we should care for the creation so that we can hand it on to the next generation. But I think it goes deeper than that. We must care for God's creation as being part of ourselves now. And we must not exploit it for short-term advantage any more than we would exploit another person for short-term advantage. We must not abuse it just as we do not abuse other people. We must care for it and we must therefore be at peace with it and let God's creation be at peace with us. For I believe really, really, really strongly that if we can't be at peace with the world around us, 
If we can't be at peace with our neighbours around us, if we can't therefore be at peace with God, who makes and loves us, we can never ever be at peace with ourselves. And I do feel the more we love creation, the more we love our neighbours, the more we will able, be able to love ourselves and value those great gifts that God has given to each and every one of us and use them to make the world a better place. We should be at that way be at peace with the world, at peace with God, at peace with ourselves, and become channels of peace throughout the world.
So now let us pray. And just as St Francis spoke to the birds, let us in our prayers hear the birds speaking to us. Now let us say together, as brothers and sisters, the prayer that our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We've listened to the birds. Now let's listen to God and let us respond willingly and wholeheartedly.
And now may God give you grace to follow St Francis and all the saints in faith and hope and love. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore.